Hello, Aaron here from Aaron's Practical Reviews. Uh, here's the objective today. I've got three lenses out here with me, three Canon lenses, the Canon 24mm, the Canon 50mm, and the Canon 10-18mm. And my objective here is to use those three lenses to capture this really neat uh, flower garden park, whatever, it's a really neat little place. Um, capture it the best I can and, and in the process showing you the differences between the lenses, what, what their capabilities are, strengths and weaknesses. So I'm going to be using the Canon T7i. Oh, right now I'm filming with the 24 millimeter um, in manual mode. Um, and uh, let's get started. Okay, now this is kind of crazy here, folks. I got the, uh, I was able to get right up close to this wild turkey with the 50 millimeter. I'm shooting at, let's see, the aperture set at 2.0, and I am about 10 feet away. This thing is just letting me come up here, and it's got babies right back in there. So, the video. Very smooth focusing. Start to happen here. And you can really pinpoint what you want to focus on. The 50. Now I am in shade over here, and you can still see how great this image looks. Lamb's ear, whatever the heck that is. Let's take a look here. I'm learning. Okay, so this is lamb's ear. You see how it jumps and captures quickly? Excellent focusing system on the 50 millimeter. Just the detail in the video on this thing is really great. All right, now for the video with the 10 to 18 millimeter. Now this guy's maximum aperture here is f4.5 versus the 50 which is f1.8 so a really large aperture the 24 millimeters f2.8 it's about it's average to good aperture for low light can we get anything i mean i'm basically touching this thing and that's the best i can get so you don't get a lot of depth here but I think I've completely crushed this place. Let's move on to another place. Experiment in a place that's a little bit different lighting. Show you some of the other possibilities here. Again, this is the 10 to 18 millimeter. Let's come back over here. Look at that. It's beautiful. Here, let's give you a proper look. Very tranquil, yet at 85 degrees and 100% humidity. Look at this background, just gorgeous. Very nice, so this is the F2.0, let's get in the shade here. This is the, uh, this is at F2.8, this is the 24 millimeter, and uh, you can see the separation it gives me here. Really nice at F2.8. I mean, I can bring the background more into focus by up that to say F7 or something like that, maybe F9. But I like this look, this is nice. And this is just, again, a really tranquil area, but you can see the crop difference, obviously, between the 10 to 18 and the 24. And in a minute here, I'm going to go to the 50 millimeter and get some of these things a little closer up. Um, I see some spider webs. Get some more of the fine detail here. So, I think in the quest to capture the entirety of this place, the three lenses do make for a good combination for that. Like if I was on vacation or something. Again, let me stress how hot it is out here. 
Holy sheesh. Biggest heat wave ever. Let's come over here. Let's, uh, okay, let me give you, let me get some photos here in a sec and let's give you just this from here. Let's appreciate this. It's a gorgeous place. see here I can separate myself from the background quite nicely but if I want to get the majority of this in focus because the 50 is extremely sharp when you open up that aperture let's I'll, let me show you that here did I mention it's hot out here it is anyway, we're not really hunting but switching its focus because it's it's pinpointing where it's going at that f1.8 Okay, so this is a really good opportunity here and some really crappy lighting. Well, actually, it's not that horrible. We're still outside, but it's really dark shade. This helps me twofold. One, it lets me show you what these lenses are like in not ideal lighting. And two, it gives me a little break from the sun because it is so hot. All right, so here we are with the 24 millimeter. And versus the 18, obviously the crop factor, but you can already see the image quality difference. It's pretty substantial, but you're talking two totally different lenses, the wide angle versus this much tighter, much tighter shot. But you can see the, the ISO drops drastically, so the grain drops drastically, and uh, it just cleans up the image quite a bit in video. Now, of course, when you're taking photos, you can always go to uh, Lightroom or any of those apps and clean it up with dehaze and clarity, and you can kind of clean up that grain quite a bit. So in photography, it's not that much of an issue, but in, in video, without a lot of processing and stuff like that, uh, right out of the camera, it's quite grainy with the 18, 10 to 18, but it gives you that nice wide angle. So you're kind of, it's kind of that trade-off. So when you're looking at the 24 millimeter, um, yeah, you're tighter, but it's a much cleaner image. So here, let's just uh, give a quick, seen enough of me sweating, let's get some of this. So again, I came from uh, up there in the nice bright sunshine, and now we are down here, just in some, it's it's fairly dark back here. I mean, it's it's not horrible lighting, but it's, it's not nearly as ideal as it was. All right, so this is the 50 millimeter. I've got this wide open at f1.8. You see the background here still blurred and see how clean this image is. It's a, just a real clean image. It just really takes that ISO way down when we can open that aperture wide up at f1.8. And now you're seeing a huge difference in the image quality between this and the um, the 10 to 18 before f4.5, which is obviously to be expected. But until you actually see it firsthand, you may not understand the differences. And it's just a really clean image in lower light. It still gives you quite a bit of bokeh there that is just beautiful. All right, so those are your basic differences in low light. Um, unfortunately, it's a trade-off for every one of them. You're either losing, obviously you're losing um, the low light performance, the Canon 10 to 18, um, you know, the 50 millimeter, you're cropped in on my eyeball here, which is not a good sight. Um, but you're getting excellent low light performance and you got a lot of options with the bokeh. Then you go to the 24 millimeter and it's good. That's kind of in the middle of both, uh, but it's not great either way. It's just really consistent, really easy to use. I'm getting tore up out here by bugs now too in the shade. Um, so yeah, these are the decisions you have to make when you're deciding between the lenses. 
how does all of this compare to the kit lens? Well, here's your answer. I'm filming with the kit lens right now. I've got it wide open in it at f4.0. I'm gonna kind of retrace my steps here. Let's take a look around. So this is with the kit lens here. As you can see, it's still very dark. So let's come up here and see how it looks up here with the kit lens. Okay, so I'm back over here to where I started today. And again, this is with the kit lens. The light has changed a bit. It's gone up a little bit. It's a little brighter. But I think I can give you a pretty good idea here of... Let's start over here. Again, the zoom. You zoom in with the kit lens, you still get that nice bokeh. Quick focusing. Can't stop without this flower. We did the... We got that one on the others, so here. Zoom that in at 55mm. So this is the exact same area. A couple minutes after I was just through here with the others, so the light hasn't changed that much, and here we are with the kit. I, I felt we had to compare that with the other ones to, to give a fair comparison. Yeah, I think that's going to wrap this up. I need to get in and get some water. This is ridiculous hot. And, uh, I don't know, this is a beautiful place, but hopefully when I put all this together, uh, I was able to accomplish my goal, and that was to capture it well enough with the lenses I had to give you an idea of how it would feel to actually be here because it's a really cool place and I didn't even go all over the place. I just like these couple areas. I thought I could focus on them to compare and contrast the lenses. So again, hopefully that was uh, helpful for you. If you check out the prices of these lenses in the description below and if you want to subscribe, I'm going to be making a lot of these videos. I'm trying to make more and more, but I just haven't had time. So all right, thanks guys.